There are around 8.7 million species that live on Earth. About 86% of land and 91% of marine species are yet to be discovered. This is not counting the many species that have populated the Earth before us. As far as we know, life on Earth began 3.7 billion years ago and has flourished since then. Nevertheless, the question of how life actually came to be still remains a mystery. It all began with a single primitive cell which sprung from the sea of organic material and found a way to get food, grow and multiply. Some cells then went on to become ancient bacteria which later developed a special structure to protect the genetic material. This structure came to be known as the nucleus. The nucleus then gave rise to modern plant and animal cells. Then about 2 billion years ago, cells began to help one another and form multicellular complex organisms with several tissues and organs. It is still unknown how these cells became alive in the first place. Nevertheless, taking a look at their most crucial organic molecules, DNA, RNA, and proteins might give us a clue. Proteins are the main workers of the body. Without them, we won't be able to breathe, digest food, move, or basically accomplish any task. The instructions to make proteins inside the cell are encoded in DNA. DNA is transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into proteins. Proteins are made of tiny blocks of amino acids, one of the basic organic components of life. These tiny organic molecules might have been delivered to planet Earth via an asteroid or a comet during the early formation of the planet. They may have also been the result of extreme conditions that dominated the planet billions of years ago. The emergence of amino acids on planet Earth could have been the result of a bolt of lightning. Once simple chemicals and water appeared on Earth, they formed the so-called primordial soup. When electrocuting a replica of such primordial soup, basic amino acids are formed. Because of chemical interactions and electrostatic forces, amino acids assembled to become the first protein. It was long thought that life started with amino acids and proteins. The focus has now been shifted towards RNA instead. The reason why RNA makes more sense now is because RNA can carry genetic instructions just like DNA and can also act as an enzyme that speeds up chemical reactions. Billions of years ago, the planet may have been dominated by an abundance of RNA. Scientists call it the RNA world. RNA could have carried both genetic information and accomplished primitive tasks just like proteins. This idea is supported by the fact that some viruses like HIV and even the coronavirus store their genetic information in RNA rather than DNA. The world's first RNAs could have also been formed in the primordial soup. Eventually, some RNA molecules became more stable kept growing and started making copies of themselves. These newly multiplying RNAs used trial and error to build more complex systems and competed against each other. One of such structures was the ribosome, an RNA molecule that links amino acids to make a protein. Proteins have a more diverse chemical structure and could therefore accomplish more tasks than RNA. Eventually, RNA's building blocks were modified and gave rise to DNA, which is more stable to carry genetic information. DNA, unlike RNA, is double-stranded and packaged in structures called chromosomes, which serve to protect the genetic code against mutations. DNA is made of slightly different building blocks that are less likely to mutate and react with each other, making the formation of longer strands possible. The longer the strands of DNA, the more information it can carry. After RNA, proteins and DNA were formed. They were enclosed in simple membranes made of fatty molecules and formed cell-like structures. Some theories suggest that life originated in hydrothermal vents. These vents have little pores that allow crucial organic materials like DNA, RNA, and proteins to be cooked over time, eventually forming a living cell capable of dividing. 
During this time, the fatty molecules could have formed bubbles around them, which created a cell-like structure. Life could have also emerged under thick ice or even in clay. In order for cells to survive, they require energy. So how did the first living complex cells obtain the energy they require? Inside every complex cell, there is a group of specialized structures called organelles, which help the cell function properly. One of these structures, the mitochondria, is what provides the cell with energy. They are the powerhouse of the cell. A single cell can have up to 2,000 mitochondria, all working together to provide it with the right amount of energy to survive and multiply. So, where did the first living complex cells get their mitochondria from? According to the theory of symbiogenesis, complex cells came from simple cells. One simple microbe that was able to produce its own energy was engulfed by another bigger microbe. Instead of being digested inside the bigger microbe, both of them lived in harmony, benefiting each other. Now that complex cells had a way to produce their own energy, they continued evolving, dividing, and forming groups, eventually becoming tissues, organs, and finally complex multicellular organisms, which eventually led to all the diversity we see on Earth. Ultimately, the origin of life remains a mystery. Now the question is whether the sprouting of life could be repeated or if it was just a lucky coincidence. And could this process happen on other planets? If so, then we're not alone after all.